Hello, my name is Volker Presser. I'm 33 years old. Uh, I was born originally in Bavaria, but I work and carry out my research at the Leibniz Institute for New Materials in Saarbrücken, Germany. My research area are energy materials, and as a material scientist, I try to find new, more sustainable, more environmentally friendly and cost-efficient ways for energy storage, harvesting, and, you may or may not believe it, for treating water. Energy materials are at the core of our everyday life. Uh, you have to recharge your cell phone every evening. You basically run out of electricity in the most unfortunate situations when you want to watch TV or want to turn on your, um, your laptop, for example. But the problem is how can we find new, more sustainable and, well, more energy delivering materials? The impact, therefore, for many questions relating to politics, Energiewende, for example, is a big topic in Germany and throughout the globe, uh, is really holding us uh, scientists responsible for coming up with new solutions because the implications are from many levels, politics, everyday life, social aspects, and of course, technology. Thank you so much, Technology Review, for this prestigious award. Having all those big names on screen, I feel quite small right now. Um, and it's, it's quite, quite an honor being one of the first in the second year run, so to speak, of this prestigious award that in the United States I've lived and worked a couple of years there. Of course, everyone knows. Uh, in Germany, not yet, but hopefully soon everyone will know. The topic that I work at is related to energy. And energy is one of those topics which are inherently connected to terms like sustainability and cost. Well, every day we also suffer from the lack of energy storage ability by recharging our cell phones or cursing when our batteries just have died. Now, as a material scientist, we try, and I try in particular, to find new ways. And very often I have to start at the very basics, at the very fundamentals. And the very fundamentals, they really start on the atomic scale. What happens at an electrically charged interface? In the process of electrosorption, ions being electric attracted to a surface, it can actually be seen in different ways. In one way, it's a very facile way for fast energy storage, storing charge. But, well, an ion at the end of the day is nothing else but an ion. So we can also immobilize an ion at an interface and see this as a way to store ions. Well, what do we do with that? One way is to create the next generation of energy storage devices. Basically, supercapacitors, you may have heard, even featured in the latest Baymax movie on the big screen. Now you have a smaller screen here. Um, but this is a technology for rapid energy storage, which is already used in your cell phone for the flash. It's already used in your hybrid car if you drive one in other vehicles. Now, the other technology that is a little bit younger than supercapacitors is capacitive deionization. So the same process of pinpointing an ion at an charged interface can be used as an extremely energy efficient way of making drinking water out of salt water. To make this dream come true, we need materials, not only understanding and concepts. To make this dream come true, we need materials. And uh, my students would complain that I could talk for hours about this. <laughs> I'm not going to do that today. Uh, stick around for the reception. I'll be happy to do more of that uh, later on. But in a very general way, we can differentiate the research that <laughs> I'm doing into capacitive and Faradaic materials. Capacitive materials, that's really just boring old carbon. High surface area activated carbon, you may know, is very nice, but it lacks the ability to tune the surface. One way to use advanced materials with a tunable nanostructure is basically really starting with small particles, a bottom-up approach, or using electrospun fibers with controllable surface features. But that's old and plain and boring, isn't it? So we want to spice up, we want to enrich the interface, not only by a Faradaic reaction, but by a reversible Faradaic reaction, redox basically, putting a little bit of a battery into those electrostatic devices. And for that, we use metal oxides or maxines, which is a new material analog to graphene, but not graphene, it's a metal carbon. At the end of the day, as a PhD student, you may come out of the laboratory with the most exciting material, and I will still tell you, well, 
you need to make an electrode out of it, not just a powder. To do that, you unfortunately need polymer binders. And most of the industrial use polymer binders consist out of a lot of sulfur, fluorine, or chlorine. Well, we've come up with a solution to that, to provide a polymer solution that neither needs toxic solvents, nor contains any sulfur, no fluorine, nor chlorine. So basically those devices at the end of lifetime you can use for making a tasty barbecue, for example, and nothing will happen to neither you or your guests, well, depending on your cooking. <coughs> basically, this enables us to large-scale manufacture um, electrodes, square meters, so it's not only a fancy hippie kind of thinking that we have here, but we really care about industrial needs, because everything that's safer is easier to implement. But at the end of the day, we still have a problem. Those electrodes put into a casing, you, if you want to have a large system, well, you need a lot of stacks. You need a lot of current collectors, separators, and such. Well, we started to liberate that by using either spherical or non-spherical <laughs> particles and doing simple one thing. We flow. We basically have a suspension of those carbon particles. It can be conventional activated carbon and just increase the amount of electrolyte by a factor of two not more. And then it becomes the consistency of orange juice with pulp. The nice thing with doing that is that at the end of the day you can do whatever you thought about in terms of electrochemical applications but in a much more cost-efficient way in scalable fashion. Be it for basically energy storage in your home basement to capitalize the PV installations on a rooftop to continuous operation of capacity ionization, of making drinking water with twice the efficiency and capacity than current systems, or reverse the process. If you need to invest energy to change the concentration, you can get energy by having a prefix concentration change. In this way, we can tap into low chemical gradient energy very efficiently. Again, thank you so much uh, for bestowing this unique honor upon me and the other recipients. And thank you so much for hearing a little bit about the crazy ideas a material scientist from that book has. Thank you.